let's jump over to our man Teddy Kegstat, folks. You can check out Teddy's work, the Tiger Forex Report. He puts out a new issue every Monday. He puts out updates throughout the week when warranted. You can check it out right under the newsletter tab. You just hit the subscribe button, folks. It's $97 for the month. You get a 30-day money-back guarantee, folks. So you get that basically free for 29 days risk-free, okay? If you're unhappy with it, you cancel it for any reason, you get a money-back guarantee. And the best part is two weeks from today, so you'd get that webinar, folks, as part of that 30-day money-back guarantee. Teddy's going to be having a webinar, and we're going to talk to Teddy a little bit uh, about that webinar in this market right now. Teddy Kegstack, good morning. Good morning, Tommy. How are you doing? I'm doing good, man. I'm trying to keep up with this market and everything we got going on. Um Let's jump into, I guess, the, the ADP number and some of the moves. Teddy, I'm not sure if you were listening. I was talking to our man Kevin Hinks, and I was just talking about some of the moves. You know, the two-year, of, of course, is getting a lot of attention with the moves it's having even this morning. What do you think of some of the moves, man, we're getting off some of this economic data that you could consider weak? Boy, quite mm -hmm. a divergence from where yields are right now on the curve versus where, especially short-term, that two-year versus where the Fed is saying they want to have interest rates. Um, what do you think of, of what we have going on? Well, you hit the nail on the head with the word divergence, which is something we've been talking about for a few months now, and especially with the yield curve. You know, it's kind of funny. We're here just in the beginning of April, and it was just, you know, two and a half weeks ago that you had the two-year on multi-month lows, you know, and now they're they've retracted huge, you know, making multi-week and multi-month highs, you know, and the same as with the Treasury bonds. But, of course, we know the short term was press was leading the curve um, back um, just three weeks ago. So you have and I back then I was saying, I'm like, we're going to see the spread the way the spreads were moving between the short terms and the longer term interest rates. I'm like, this is a big sign for what's going on in the economy. Now, obviously, the the interest rate market has gone bid because of the banking crisis, which is more systemic than they're. I mean, they're, they've been downplaying it incredibly, but there's still more uh, ripples that we're hearing, and uh, we know that the market is feeling, you know. And I think one of the biggest thing also is the retraction in earnings that's coming too. It's being reflective now in the S and P's. So what's going on in the interest rate market is you have a market that's being propped up, and I think that that's scaring a lot of, especially your professional um, investors and money managers, uh, because the algos they just look at math. But when you look at what's really going on in the environment, you know, we're propping up the debt market right now. Right now, we should really be at higher yields, you know, and it's just all because of the banking crisis. And I mentioned yeah. that a few weeks ago when we first got the pop off those lows. And I'm like, there's something really, really wrong here, you know, because right now the Fed is – coerce other central banks to be buying our treasuries, you know? So, I mean, which goes against everybody's intended plan for what they were doing up until this banking crisis. So that's that's going to be a spillover. And you can also look at it in gold as well, you know? I mean, to quote JP Morgan, gold is the only real money. Everything else is debt. And, it, and that, I believe, 100%. And that for a long time, because we've been building this house of cards on derivatives, on top of derivatives, on top of derivatives, you know, 2008 was a signal of things to come. 2008, we had a, a major correction in the markets because we had a lot of bad paper that was introduced in the in the uh, mid-90s, you know. So it yeah. took a good 10 years to really impact the markets. Well, now we're getting the impact of the fact that we not only did we not learn our lessons, the banking crisis or the banks got even worse, you know, so and that's systemic, you know, and I think if, if you really watch, especially the S&Ps, you know, the, everyone's happy that, it, oh, they're near their highs. Everything's getting strong. But you have eight you have eight stocks basically floating the whole market, up, you know, up. Everything else is down on the year. The Russell, if you look at the Russell and the mid cap, you know, and the majority of the S&Ps, you're not doing well if that's in your portfolio. And even the overall index is looking for like a head and shoulder pattern all we need is a slide of what like you know get down to like 20 you know somewhere around like 40 to 39 even you know in the s and p's and you're looking at without a doubt we have a very big bear trend coming you know and i think that's yeah. going to really the interest rate markets because of what they're doing that's showing this especially with the rally in gold you know the reality is is that there's nothing there there's no value you know especially in the stock market if you have companies where their earnings are crashing right now plus the velocity of the dollar is crashing you're really looking at a house of cards on value you know so and i think that that's something we really need to be mindful of you know yeah i agree with a lot of what you're saying man um you mentioned the dollar and, mm -hmm. and quite quite the moves in the dollar of course what do you think of the dollar man as we're near that hundred point again 101.61 sure. i got it on my chart right now 
Yeah, well, once again, with the way the yield curve is, you know, flipped, that's really hurting the dollar right now. Because right now you have a Fed that's on a raising on a hawkish basis, and that's been driving the trend with the dollar strength or holding it up at least. And now you have the fact that the bond, the market is the market, you know. And as far as as long as yields are retracting, that's weakening the dollar. And then also you have oil. This is what's going on with oil is really, really impacting things. Like remember how. For a year and a half, oil was driving the, the bullish trend in the U.S. dollar yen. Well, now, because of what's going on globally with these new deals, the petrodial, it, it's dead. It's dying, you know, and that's a very, very big deal. So as now as oil rallies, and especially since we're a net, now we import and we're not a net exporter, that's really, really going to hurt our economy as well as the value of the dollar. Oil keeps going up. I mean, we can see $100, $100 oil is definitely in our future, you know, and if we do not start to change our policies in this country and become a net exporter, we're going to be at $150 a barrel oil because the oil we're buying, we're going to have, a, we're going to, have to buy it with a conversion uh, risk also. You think that when we buy oil, we're going to be buying it in U.S. dollar terms? We're going to have to convert dollars to another currency just to buy oil. That's not a good thing for us. And could you talk about, Teddy, you've talked about it before, but I loved it. I remember the first time, we're going years back, man, when my dad was talking to you, I was talking to you, but just the education you gave us on the different Forex pairings. And when you mm -hmm. talk about crude in particular, and there's, of course, so many different influences right now, but just staying on the crude, because I like it because we're getting some volatility in crude, and, and I kind of agree, you know, $70, $80 crude. I see some risk to the upside there on those prices, especially with um, OPEC Plus now in the game saying we're not going to let it go down. Uh, Japan, for instance, you know, yes. exporter, importer versus the U.S. and the amount of even production that we have. Could you just real briefly, we got a couple minutes here, talk to the listeners, you know, U.S. versus Japan, because I know the yen in particular, a lot of listeners follow with gold in particular. Um, the, could you just go over that for the listeners in, in terms of how their currencies are driven by crude in particular? Sure, sure. Um, well, obviously, because Japan doesn't have very many resources, so they're, they have to import their components to build and whatever it is that they sell. And crude oil, obviously, is something they need because that's what makes all the engines run, you know. So, and because that because of that factor, the price of crude definitely, as crude goes up, the value of the yen struggles. Okay, you know, it's there's other there's you know there's interest rate variables, there's other all kinds of components. But when you have a country and a currency like the U.S dollar yen, for instance, that becomes a very big component versus like, say, like the dollar and, and the Canadian dollar, because Canada is a commodity producing country. They're so close to us. You know, that's why we see it like right now, the U.S. dollar Canada has been a very big wide range trade. Oil doesn't affect it. Interest rates that were kind of in tandem. So that's why we're in that range trade versus, you know, with the U.S. dollar yen, we would had a, a bull because of oil for so long interest rates, uh, you know, and also interest rates. And now we're coming to where there's a BOJ change, but now the banking crisis has changed that. So, <laughs> so and to be quite honest with you, the, the, the BOJ, even if they raise rates, their policy is to be buying, is they're still buying their treasury market, you know? And that's a yeah. big problem with that too. So I think as you have the turn in oil and they change to another currency versus the dollar for oil, that's how that'll change also the currencies also because it's no longer, that variable's not there. I think it's so cool, man. Can you hang with us during the break, Teddy? Sure, absolutely. Okay, perfect. Folks, we got a caller. We're going to talk a little bit of futures volumes out there as well, and we'll talk a little bit of Teddy's workshop coming up in two weeks, folks. Stay tuned. Yeah. Welcome back, folks. We have the markets flying back. S&P's almost flat, down just two points right now. We're talking to our man, Teddy Kegstad. Please, folks, check out the Tiger Forex Report right under the newsletter tab. And, Teddy, you got a webinar two weeks from today, the Tiger Forex Report second quarter market forecast webinar. Real briefly, could you just talk to everybody about what you'll be going over in that hour-long webinar for your subscribers in a couple weeks? Sure. What we're going to go over is a lot of the, uh, the variables that are driving the FX market. So we're going to go have one topic will be the central banks. What are they really doing? What's going on? You know, I mean, we already know that we, there's been a hawkish, you know, forecast from most of the central banks for a while, but now we have this divergent with the banking crisis. So we're going to interlay that and see what we can where the, where the outlook is going into the summertime and as we get into the second quarter. Um, another thing is going to be the shifting of trade zones. BRICS is becoming a very, very big issue, um, especially because if they actually do come up with their own currency like the euro. See, the difference is the euro has a currency because they're all one trade zone. They're basically 
the sovereignty of these countries no longer exists. The BRICS, it's not going to be that way. Everyone keeps their sovereignty and their currencies, but they're going to have one base currency to use to kind of basically lift them. That's going to become a very, very big issue, you know, especially yes. as we're, with world trade. So we're going to talk about these are things that you need to. They're not happening tomorrow, but they're happening very soon. This is all stuff that's in motion. And I, Another, I love the yes. big picture, man, because there are so many big shifts going on right now. And we just got one minute left, but we're going to jump to a caller, right, Teddy? we got sure. Jeff from Philly. And Jeff, if you could jump into it, I know it's about some futures volumes for Teddy, so we can cover it, man. Yeah, I'll ask as fast as I can. So my question is uh, on um, United States dollar pairs on an intraday basis. Is it fair to use futures volume to judge the liquidity of the cash market where there is no available volume to see? Uh, that's a great question. Uh, it depends on when you're talking about. If you're talking about around the rollovers, absolutely not, because you have a lot of um, where you have spreads rolling over that flips the market and the volumes in certain months. So I'll be very careful. Like, for instance, when you have we just had March expiration. So from March 1st to the third week in March, I'd be very, very cautious with that. OK, if you're going to especially around that time, watch the option volume, not the futures volume. If you're trying to get a sense of direction and, and uh, volatility. Um, but is, and especially when it comes to currency pairs, especially your majors, you know, the futures only have so many options and what you can trade. So you, you really, when you when you watch the cash, that's the biggest thing to do. You know, when I was in the S and P's, they they have a lot of volume, but they don't have the volume like you have something say like for instance the thirty year or the S and P's or markets like that. And that's and there's times when they get thin. You know, so if you're trading like that, the major currencies. Those volumes are a little bit more consistent, um, but they get very erratic because futures has the weekend, you know, where you don't have trading, you know, and the hours aren't the same as with the cash. There's some there's a little bit of a, a disconnect there so that the cash is the thing you really, really want to watch. All right. I appreciate okay. it, Jeff. That was a great question. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure more people are wondering that. I was listening to myself. Teddy, man, I appreciate the time as always. We look forward to talking to you next week and we look forward to the webinar in a couple weeks, man. Sounds great, Tommy. You have a good one. Thanks, Teddy. You're welcome, Thanks Jeff. so much, Jeff. Thanks to my Thank producer, you. Al, as always, doing a fantastic job behind the board, holding things for an extra minute there for some important information. Folks, stay tuned. Basil's up next. Have a great Wednesday. We'll talk to you tomorrow.